of course we're proud. We're really proud of our students. We love our students. We teach them to be thought leaders. And uh, they've gone out in the world and they're doing that. We're really proud of them. And they're raising an issue that's an important issue. Uh, it's a national, it's a, the issues of um, the health consequences of uh, football is a national issue. They should have a say in it. We believe they should have a say in it. Uh, we just don't believe that the proper way is uh, through a labor negotiation. What would be a more appropriate venue than a labor relations board hearing? I don't know. A national labor relations board hearing officer in Chicago decided that scholarship football players at Northwestern University are employees of the university and therefore they have a right to vote whether they want to organize and form a union. We believe that the, the scholarship, the, the aid, the payments that are made to them, the tuition, the stipends they get, $1,000 or more a month, that is in essence compensation for their services. They are paid by the university for playing football. If they don't play football, they don't really receive the aid. They don't receive the compensation. They don't receive the room and board. They are football players primarily, and that is, that is the main task that they are doing with the university. They also happen to be students, but the two are not mutually exclusive. You can be an employee of the university and be a student, and the fact that they are also students does not mean they're not entitled to the protections of labor law. There are actually many reasons that were cited. Just about every argument that the football players made was upheld, including the coaches having so much control over the athletes' schedules, what they wear, whether they can have a job whether they have to miss class for practice. There are just a, a huge list of the ways that the coaches have um, control over the football players. I don't think that it's unique to Northwestern. Um, that's how it is for college football players. You schedule your academics around football. And in this case, uh, Kane's personal experience, uh, he had a tough time pursuing a pre-med track. And uh, that has impacted him academically. Coulter now in at quarterback, pulls it out from Mark, and Coulter in for a touchdown! touchdown. His second rushing touchdown of the day, and it's 16 nothing Wildcats. The ruling did mention how much the university spends on the scholarships, as well as how much the universities make from these very lucrative contracts with the TV stations and others to air these football games, and of course a cut of revenues that the universities get from the football games and the football players themselves. Um, they, they do get the scholarships, but they don't get to use their likenesses. Uh, they don't personally get to benefit from a lot of the largesse that the games end up benefiting the university. Coulter, touchdown! Uh, in the testimony, Kane Coulter, the quarterback who was uh, the primary football player bringing this action, mentioned that, you know, his I think his jersey was one of the top sellers and he himself didn't get to benefit from that. Also, he wore, um, I believe he said Ray-Ban sunglasses in a post and was told to remove that because they're not supposed to, the football players are not supposed to look as though they are taking something of value and endorsing. And the union says that if they do get to bargain with the university, they're not going to ask that the players start making millions of dollars or anything like that because they don't want to bargain for something that would make the players ineligible to play. That wouldn't make sense. So they would adhere to the NCAA rules. Their primary uh, request now is um, safety. All we're asking for is a voice at the table so that these athletes can address their concerns. Kane Coulter talked about it. Concussions, health and safety. To the extent we can deal with compensation issues, we will. But this is not going to you know, be the end of college athletes. The players can vote, it's my understanding, immediately whether to form a union. Those ballots are expected to be impounded and not counted or looked at until the arguments are finished. And that could be quite some time. The university has already said it will take this case to the full NLRB, National Labor Relations Board in Washington, D.C. And from there, it could then go into the courts. And if it goes all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, 
potentially could take years. Uh, whether it goes on for years and years is really a function of the court system, as you know. You know, there are appeals available that go up to the courts of appeals directly from the NLRB, and that process can take years. Uh, this will not be a quick process. The men on my team and I understand that we may not personally benefit from our role in today's events. More important than any personal gain is the fact that we are taking steps to improve the game we love for future generations. Well, King Coulter is past eligibility, so uh, I think his role was more of the person, you know, uh, getting the ball rolling. Even the attorneys for the union say this is only a first step, that um, NCAA rules change, and so his role may have been the one who started a ball rolling in, that will change college football forever.